I've made quite a few videos about how to look after your motorcycle, how to clean it, how to protect it, that kind of thing. I have covered chrome care off in the past, but only in conjunction with general sort of care methods and regimes. I've never dwelled too much on chrome care because to me, there's no need to. Chrome care in essence is very similar to paintwork care. But one thing that has become abundantly clear whilst running this channel is that looking after chrome for some people is akin to witchcraft. Something that they find unfathomable no matter how hard they try. But having said that, I read some of the comments on motorcycle care and gradually bit by bit all has become clear. A lot of people quite simply resist the notion that a motorcycle requires any kind of care at all. And even for those who do accept that care is required and they do have regimes for caring for the bike, some of the notions as to how that should be done are so way out that there are times I'm absolutely gobsmacked. Everything from you should never allow your motorcycle to get wet which always leaves me scratching my head as to what you do when you're out on your bike and it starts raining. And people even suggesting that you should clean your bike dry with a dry cloth or even newspaper. And never ever use water. Now, since I got the classic 500 chrome, these requests for information on chrome care have gone through the roof. And although I'm not holding out much hope that making this video will make an awful lot of difference, I'm hoping just to tackle some of these myths that are circulating about how you should look after a bike with an emphasis on how to look after chrome. Now let's kick off with these myths about water. Water is a solvent, it's readily available, it's cheap, and it is the best solvent cleaner that you have at your disposal for the care of your motorcycle. Not only that, if used correctly, it's also a lubricant. It allows you to dissolve and remove grime with minimum abrasion to paint surfaces or chrome. Now, yes, water can promote corrosion, but only if you don't thoroughly dry your motorcycle out after you've cleaned it. And thoroughly drying your motorcycle is not rocket science. You can use a bike dryer, a device that I've found to be very efficient. Or you can follow the instructions given in the handbook by most motorcycle manufacturers. After thorough conventional towel drying, you run the bike for several minutes to heat up all those surfaces and evaporate the water. Then you take the bike for a good run to blow out any moisture that might have been left behind by the first two drying processes. Then on top of that, if you just use a simple oil-based maintenance spray and water dispersant, your bike is clean, dry and it has a rust inhibiting layer in place. You've done absolutely no damage to your bike whatsoever. What you've actually done is you've improved that motorcycle's chances of longevity of staying in good condition for longer. Now, road gram is a mixture of all sorts of substances. Tiny particles of grit, mud, clay, tiny pieces of metal, and all sorts of pollutants which are acidic in nature. And road gram is a sponge. It soaks up and retains water. And by leaving it on your motorcycle, what you're doing is creating the perfect circumstances for paintwork to be damaged and corrosion to start biting into your bike. Now, when you clean your bike dry by using a cloth or newspaper, whatever other materials have been suggested to me, you're not cleaning that dirt away. What you're doing is you're transferring it onto that cloth. And you're basically turning that cloth into sandpaper, a fine sandpaper. So, with every stroke and wipe you make on your paintwork, your frame, you're wearing away and damaging your paintwork. All you're doing is hastening the demise of your paint and shortening the life of your motorcycle. It's a very destructive method of cleaning. 
Now, micro scratches on paintwork and chrome are just a fact of life. You've only got to touch chrome or your paintwork with your fingers and you will cause micro scratches. That's inevitable. So as a general rule of thumb, touch chrome and paintwork as little as possible. You don't need to manhandle your tank with your hands while you're riding it or while you're sitting talking to your friends. So make contact with those surfaces both with your body and with any luggage or clothing as little as possible. Especially when the bike is dirty or dusty. Now in my dealings with restoring motor cars and motorcycles in the past, on occasion I used to visit one of the last chrome platers in Hull. A guy who used old school methods and did chrome plating and restoration up to British standards. I doubt he's still around now, bless him, because he was an old guy when I knew him and that was a long time ago. But chroming properly is a very time and money intensive process. Apart from multiple polishing procedures, acid baths and cleaning processes, Bare steel should first be plated with copper to a depth of 30 microns. It should then be nickel plated to a depth of 45 microns, followed by a very thin decorative plating of chrome to a depth of 3 microns. Now, those were the British standards that he adhered to. But as I remember him explaining to me, back in the 1960s, the Japanese started doing chrome plating on the cheap. The nickel plating, or should I say the chemicals used for the nickel plating, were the most expensive chemicals in this entire process. And by cutting down the thickness of that nickel plating, or leaving it out altogether, they found that they could produce motorcycles much cheaper than us British. This, unfortunately, sort of started a trend with chrome plating. And any chrome plating on any vehicle or any product these days is of dubious quality compared to how it was, let's say, back in the 1950s. Now, there's nothing we can do about that. It is what it is. But he explained to me that even poor quality chrome can last for years if it's looked after properly, if it's protected. And he extolled a regime to me that I've used ever since. And as far as I'm concerned, it's worked out pretty well for me. Now, I am going to use some products from Auto Bright Direct in this video. I'm using them because I've tried them out and I recommend them. They are not paying me or compensating me in any way for recommending their products. And I should add that in general, they only give me just enough product to be able to test it and conduct a video review. It's not like they're giving me a lifetime supply or anything like that. But on your behalf, I have managed to secure a discount for viewers of this channel. And I'll give you details of that at the end of the video. First of all, ensure that everything you are using is scrupulously clean. Scrub out your wash bucket with a brush to make sure there's no grit or dirt particles in there that could scratch your chrome. And make sure that any of your wash mitts, polishing cloths, anything that you're going to touch the bike with has been thoroughly washed in the washing machine using a decent quality detergent but no fabric conditioner. Now, ordinarily, I would do this as part of the entire bike cleaning regime, and I would wet the bike down with a hose pipe. The only reason I'm not doing that in this video is because I didn't want to wash the whole bike. I just needed to wet it down for demonstration purposes. So I just used a bottle with a mister attachment. Now, you can use a spray-on bike cleaner during this regime if you want to. I'm not saying not to use that anymore, but I didn't want to do that for the purposes of this video. I'm simply showing you how to clean chrome. And you are going to have to hand clean chrome, even if you've used a bike spray first. You need to use a good quality salt-free automotive shampoo in order to assist with removing contaminants from your chrome that water alone might struggle with. This will also enhance lubrication during the cleaning process which helps to cut down the incidence of scratches. Now in this demonstration I'm using another shampoo from Autobrite Direct 
called Purple Velvet. Now you don't have to use this, you can use any good quality salt free automotive shampoo. But what has struck me in using this shampoo is its lubricity. Basically, as well as it being a good cleaner, it's very slippery, which is exactly what you want when you're cleaning chrome. Now, the chrome work on the bullet, to be honest, wasn't that dirty. I've followed this procedure several times in the past, and although it's a while since I last did it, the product that I have used for protection has done a good job of stopping dirt sticking to it. There were a few desiccated bugs stuck to the front of the tank, and in general it was a bit smeary. Other than that, in general, it was just a bit dusty from road film. I very rarely allow my bikes to get any worse than this because the higher the build-up of dirt, the more likelihood that paint and chrome damage is going to occur. People often lambast my videos because the bikes don't appear dirty enough to them when I'm actually cleaning them. And what I will say to those people, if you're thinking of making that comment now, if you're leaving your bike until it's got a quarter of an inch of old crud stuck to it before you clean it, you're doing it all wrong. Cleaning paintwork and chrome is an essential part of bike maintenance, and it should be carried out whenever it needs doing, not just when you can't tell what colour the bike is anymore. Now, as I said earlier, normally I would use a hose to dampen the bike down, but here I'm just using a spray bottle filled with clean water. Wetting the surfaces dampens that dirt and loosens it off. Some will run off before you even get to work on it with the shampoo. And that's part of the object here is to rinse away as much surface dirt as possible. That's easier with a hose than it is with a water bottle. It also rehydrates dried on insects, which makes them easier to remove without scratching the chrome. Now, leave that water to sort of soak in and do its job for a few minutes obviously it's best if you carry out this procedure in the shade i sighted the bike in the sun because i was filming it but it's always better to clean the bike in cool shade if you can because you don't want uncontrollable drying out of any of the fluids that you're using to wash chrome down it leaves water spots behind which is something you definitely want to avoid on chrome now, when you've left that water to do its job for a little while, using your shampoo solution with a clean wash mitt, gently but thoroughly wash the chrome surfaces down. Now, if you get any stubborn areas, especially dead insects, don't be tempted to scrub at them because the chitin exoskeletons of those insects will scratch the chrome. If necessary, just rinse and repeat as many times are required to get rid of them. Then once your tank's clean, rinse it back off again. Now it's even more important with chrome that you don't allow any of these solutions or even the water after rinsing to dry out on the chrome. It's more difficult to remove water spots from chrome than it is paintwork because you can't use any form of abrasive to remove them. If you are unlucky enough to get water spots, just keep re-wetting it in the hope that water will dissolve those spots so that you can towel it off, leaving a clean, clear finish. If you can't remove them, don't attempt to remove them again. Just leave them. They will go with time. Now, when you've thoroughly rinsed away that shampoo solution, it's time to get on them with a clean towel and dry the chrome off completely. I can't stress enough, everything that you use must be clean. You don't want any grit hiding in the fibres of cloths or wash mitts. It just wreaks havoc with chrome. When you're finished, what you should be left with is clean, clear, dry chrome. And like I said earlier on in this video, chrome really should be treated just the same as paintwork. So it now needs a coat of protection to protect it, to insulate it from the elements. Now if you do have any scratches in your chrome, you're just going to have to live with it. Chrome is very, very hard and it's unlikely that you would be able to compound out a scratch in chrome by hand. The other problem is the layer of chrome is very thin, so by the time you've got through that scratch, the chances are you will have also gone through the chrome to the layers underneath. Any existing scratches that you have, just live with them. And the next thing I'm going to say is going to sort of fly in the face of convention and everything else you ever thought about chrome. 
never ever use chrome cleaner or any type of metal polish on chrome just don't do it those types of products will cause far more harm than good now ordinarily i would recommend a good can arbor wax paste for protecting chrome actually i still do that hasn't changed but i have come across a product from autobrite direct that i thought you might be interested in the main reason being that people keep asking me about synthetic waxes so i thought this would be a good opportunity to quickly show you an example and give you my thoughts synthetic waxes were very popular in the 80s and going through the 1990s uh, like anything else these sort of products run in fashions the flavor of the month for a while and then the die out as companies try to sell us other products to replace them i've got absolutely nothing against synthetic waxes and i have to say this is one of the better ones i've come across recently the abyss from auto brights hellshine range instead of actual wax these sort of products contain resins and polymers they generally dry a lot harder than can arbor wax so they last quite a bit longer and i suppose they're handy for people that don't want to be waxing the machines every weekend or every other weekend they call this stuff the abyss because i've got to admit it gives an absolutely outstanding shine and it's more noticeable on black paintwork it also seems to have some minor sort of filling abilities in filling very minor micro scratches now i have tested this stuff to exhaustion in fact i barely had enough left to make this video it's good at shrugging off water it's also got very good uv resistance which is something important if you live in a hot sunny country and i would say that in normal use in a vehicle left outside all the time because i've compared this with other waxes on different panels on my car it will last about 30 percent longer than the leading can arbor wax it is good stuff i like it now when first treating your chrome with any sort of wax whether it be something like this that i'm using or a can arbor wax you need to remove anything that was previously used on the chrome any other polishes or waxes that will give the product that you're using maximum adherence to the surface which will in turn help it last longer so as you see me doing here with some panel wipe or pre-paint wipe and a clean workshop wipe gently clean all the surfaces down to remove any residue of what has been used before now this abyss wax is funny stuff it's not like anything that i've used in the past it's got the consistency of strawberry jam and especially if the weather is warm it's quite liquid even though it is a paste very sparingly and I must emphasize very sparingly smear it or spread it all over your paintwork and your chrome make sure that you get into any seams any nooks and crannies but most of all make sure that you get a good even coverage and then leave it now this product has no cut in it it's non abrasive so it won't remove any scratches or anything like that as I've said, what I do find is that it does tend to fill very, very light swells and micro scratches, which is a good thing. But obviously, as this wax wears away, those scratches will return. Now, Auto Bright Direct tell you to leave this for 15 minutes before polishing. I tried that and it just, it just smeared even more. It hadn't dried out. I generally find, depending on the temperatures and the weather conditions, half an hour to an hour is best to get a good dry product that's ready for buffing off and it might be that i've been putting it on too thickly I, I don't know i don't think i have but when it is dry enough for buffing it should feel dry to the touch and it should go all sort of streaky it shouldn't look wet anymore either way when it is ready using a good quality soft buffing cloth buff the chrome and the paint work up now on the subject of buffing cloths um with one consignment of samples that auto bright sent through to me they sent me a couple of these 
yellow buffing cloths uh, they're really really thick and soft absolutely perfect for this job auto bright are just a small family run firm that supplies to the trade all their products are aimed at professional users and i have to say it really does show in the quality of the gear that they supply these are without a doubt the best quality buffing cloths i've ever used and on a 40 degree wash with a good quality detergent and no fabric conditioner they come up like new now for best results with this polish three coats is best but don't do them all on the same day Leave at least eight hours between coats to allow each layer to cure properly so that you don't loosen it up with the next layer that you put on. Now this is just one coat because obviously I removed anything that had been on here before and as you can see the results are outstanding both on the paint and on the chrome. And this chrome is now protected from the elements and from contaminants until the next time the bike's washed. Hopefully this video has demystified maintenance of chrome. People often write to me saying that they love the look of chrome on a bike but they would never have a chrome covered bike because of the extra care it takes. As you can see here, the care that chrome requires is very much the same as your paintwork and there are not really any additional cleaning or maintenance regimes required to keep it looking good for years. Now, before I go, wheels and exhaust systems. A few months ago, I showed you Auto Bright's wheel sealant, another type of synthetic wax. I've been using it ever since, and whether your wheels are painted, whether they're anodized, or whether they're chrome, it is a really good quality, hard wearing wheel sealant that will keep your chrome on your wheels looking good again with regular use. I'm really impressed with it. Now, they have agreed an exclusive 10% discount for viewers of this channel using a discount code to be used at checkout which i will leave in the video description down below now it is case sensitive so be sure to use it exactly as it's written in the video description i'll also leave links to these products that i've shown you now to keep it exclusive to this channel they have told me that they will change this um, code from time to time but when they do i will let you know and that will allow you 10% off the purchase of any product that are not currently on sale and it doesn't include large items like power washers and lances etc. Now you didn't hear this from me but if you're not in a hurry but you do fancy trying out some of these products if you wait a couple of weeks Autobrite Direct usually have an end of season 50% off sale, so it might be worth waiting till then, but you didn't hear that from me. Now, finally, the protection of chrome on exhausts and other areas that get hot. Obviously, you should clean it in exactly the same way that I showed you with a good shampoo and some water. But even auto bright waxes would not survive the temperatures that are reached on an exhaust system. So I would recommend using a good quality oil based maintenance spray, liberally coating your exhaust system and all exposed chrome that is subject to high temperatures. Obviously be careful not to get any of this on your brake components and just as a precaution I would always clean your brake rotors after you perform this task just to be on the safe side. Now I'm using Silcoline Pro Prep here, I found it does a good job. It is silicon based but any oil based product will perform the same task of protecting your chrome from the elements and inhibiting rust until your next wash session. Now I have to reiterate any good quality oil based maintenance spray will do this job. I don't know what brands of maintenance spray are available in your country whether you're in india america australia new zealand you know i simply don't know so just use your best judgment and use a good brand name that you trust that is oil based right i think that has covered everything the demystification of chrome maintenance Really, with this knowledge, there is absolutely no excuse for having rusty, crappy-looking chrome. Unless, of course, it was already rusty and crappy before you saw this video. 
Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate the time that you put aside every week to watch my videos. We've just passed the 40,000 subscribers mark. That means that my subscribers have doubled in the last nine months. Thank you so much. I will, of course, be back next week. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.